Hi there. My name is Gijsbert Stoet and I'm the creator of the Site Toolkit platform. And today I'm going to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And here, of course, you see the uh, hierarchy of needs pyramid with physiological safety, love, esteem and self-actualization needs in it. I'm going to argue that it is the best theory and the most influential theory in the history of psychology. Also, I would like to hear your opinion about this. So please leave a comment below the video. Also, I will put links below the video to some of the original work and the papers that I refer to today. So let's dive into the work of Maslow. Who was Maslow? Well, his name was uh, Abraham Maslow and he was an American, an American psychologist. He was born in 1908 in New York as the son of Jewish immigrants who came from Ukraine. He liked studying already as a child and he studied psychology uh, at university and later became, became a, a very famous psychology professor. Interestingly, in the first part of his career, he worked as a behaviorist. And if you're a psychology student, you will know that a behaviorist is somebody, is a psychologist who only studies behavior and who argues that we cannot really understand what's going on in people's head, at least not in an objective way. And that for that reason, people don't study it. Uh, but he sort of like changed his perspective on psychology and I find it also really interesting and I think you can also see how his 1943 paper was influenced by his background in behaviorism. Now I said he is famous for his 1943 article which was called A Theory of Human Motivation it was published in Psychological Review and that if, if it's still 2023, when you're watching this, that's exactly 80 years ago. So we're going to talk today specifically about what's in that paper and the influence it had on psychology. Now, before I continue, I would just to ask you to like and subscribe because liking and subscribing is really important for Site Toolkit. It helps uh for these videos you know to to be used by the youtube algorithm and to make this sort of like more easily to find for people like yourself so if you like this video and if you want to see more of this work please like and subscribe okay let's go on so this is actually sort of like the first page of the article i just thought i show you the original because it's actually it was somewhat hard to find you can find it somewhere uh i think on a website and uh, there are three main points i would say in the paper so the first one is that you know the first key point is that human motivation is driven by human needs and what is human motivation so that is you know our drive to do things what we want to do is driven actually by our needs. So what our body needs, what our mind needs, what we as human beings need. And um, in this uh, second key idea, of course, in the theory is that there are five different levels of needs and they are often presented within a pyramid. So at the bottom you have the physiological needs. So what you really need to for basic survival, you need to eat and you need to drink. Uh, you, know, you, you need to be you need to be kept warm enough. So really basic needs for absolute survival. Then above that are safety needs. So you need to have shelter from rain and from dangerous animals. In the modern world, of course, most people's safety needs are satisfied. But if you think, you know, we evolved as a species in a different world. We lived for a long time, of course, in the Stone Age and life was dangerous and people created shelters and protected themselves from dangerous animals. Um, there are the love needs. Now, love not in the romantic sense, but in the sense of social needs. You need friends and family, people around yourself. Then there are the esteem needs. So esteem is 
self-esteem for your own capacities, but also that you are being appreciated by others for what you can do. And the highest level of needs is the need for self-actualization. And in short, in a nutshell, that is uh, becoming what you can be. And the way I like to see this is that we all have we all have different talents. And if you can, can work on your talents, then you're self-actualizing. But if you're, for example, if you have the talent to become a great musician, but you, you never have the opportunity to play music, well, then you don't self-actualize. So those are the five needs. Now, the third key point is that lower levels of needs become less prepotent prepotent or dominant when they are more satisfied. So for example, when you're super hungry, right? So you can't think of anything else. That's the only thing that you have on your mind. But once you've eaten and you don't feel hungry anymore, you don't think so much anymore about your, you know, physiological needs, you know, assuming that the other one said that you're not thirsty and so on. Then you can think about, start thinking about other issues in your life. And then, the next level becomes the most dominant or prepotent one. So prepotent is a word that he used a lot in his uh, 1943 paper. If you look at a dictionary, it means something like dominant, having priority over other response tendencies. So these three points are the main points of the article. Also, I would recommend you, if you're a psychology student, certainly read the article it is actually really easy to read it's not too long and because it's so important and influential as i said you know it, it, it is a classic so read it uh, on the site toolkit webpage i have a copy of the paper and i have a link below the video so that you can find it now i want to talk about the influence this paper uh, has had so first of all I think there are, the, you know, it's a very broad theory, right? So it has lots of links to other areas of psychology because it's something so fun about something so fundamental, needs and motivation. It certainly links to developmental psychology because people develop, or for example, self-actualization, certainly that is uh, a developmental component. Uh, but it also links has links to general psychology, for example, to do, I, I would say, to the work of James, uh, you can read more about that. Uh, I have some links about that below the video. So it links well to psychology broadly. The second point I would say is that it has had a lot of influence beyond psychology. And I think that's quite nice. Actually, if you look it up, if you look, if you search on the internet, you see it has been, it has been influential in, you know, in business, in marketing, in, in lots of areas, in HR, uh, so have a look at that uh, if you want to know more about the influence it has had. And finally, it has been recommended as a life guide. People have used this paper as, um, as an inspiration of how to lead your life. And I find it quite interesting and I have a link about a paper that goes into that. Now, is, is, is that all? No, uh, not at all. Because actually Maslow, of course, was in his 30s when he wrote a 1943 paper. And he has done more work. So certainly an influential book actually written in 1968 uh, called Toward a Psychology of Being, uh, you know, has this here, this pyramid on the cover. It's, it's interesting. He certainly developed his own thinking uh, with new ideas such as about transcendence and peak experiences. If you want to know more about that, uh, I, have a, I have a summary of that in, in an article that I list uh, after this. First of all, I want to show you, uh, you know, other work, like for example, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs as a Guide for Living. Uh, pause the video for a moment, maybe to read the, uh, the beginning of that article. It's, this is from 1981. You can find it on the internet. Uh, it's in the field of humanistic psychology. This article uh, in the review of general psychology is also really interesting because um, this is about, focuses really about Maslow's work beyond that 1943 paper and has some really interesting ideas and explains that in a little bit more detail. So highly recommended to read as well. 
Uh, and then there's this paper, also a fascinating paper published in Psychological Science called Renovating the Pyramid of Needs. Uh, for the, it's a nice title. Uh, and that takes an evolutionary psychological perspective on the work and change the pyramid actually a little bit. So they say, well, this, this is from, from an evolutionary psychological perspective, if we, we take the idea of Maslow, but, but we would like to arrange it like this. They took the self-actualization out, but instead they put in parenting, mate retention and mate acquisition. Uh, now, I, I don't have time to go into the ideas behind that. I, I recommend you actually to read the paper, quite interesting. And what do you think about this? I personally think that this self-actualization point is really important in Maslow's uh, work. Um, it probably depends a little bit what perspective you come from. So uh, leave your comments below the video to, to, you know, to say what you think about that. But we're not at the end yet, so hold on. Uh, the final thing that I would like to talk about, and that's actually something you can do yourself, uh, it's about empirical tests of this theory. So Maslow's theory is not just a theory with all sorts of interesting concepts, but it's something that can be tested. And for that we can use Cytoolkit. I implemented uh, a survey based on this specific article by Robert Tarmina and Jennifer Go. If I, I'm not sure if I pronounced their names correct. Uh, these are Chinese authors and uh, they created a questionnaire, uh, you know, with, you know, with sort of like 15 sort of like points for each needs level. And then you can check to what degree your needs are satisfied and you can compare your scores to some of the uh, summary uh, averages that they presented in their paper and which I have put on the site toolkit uh, survey uh, library webpage and the link to that is below the video so I recommend you to do that um, if you if you just if you have your phone at hand uh, you can also just uh, scan this QR code it takes you directly to my uh, site toolkit webpage now once more please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more uh, like this sort of thing uh, and leave your comments below the video. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you soon again.